Hello, I'm Francesca. And I'm Ryan, and we're the co-founders of Cute Circuit. At Cute Circuit, we design the future of fashion. We combine smart textiles with microelectronics and cutting-edge fashion design to create garments that do amazing, magical things, such as telecommunicate over distance, bring people together, or allow people to express themselves in new, interesting ways. Cute Circuit was founded in 2004, which makes us the world's first wearable technology brand. In 2004, nobody knew what wearable technology was, and they thought we were crazy. Our clothing can transform. It can adapt. It can animate. It can move. And all of these things through digital technology become possible, and that's something that fashion has never done before. I've always been very interested in the concept of possibility. I think that's one of the roles that artists and designers bring to the world, is to show people what's possible. We really try to bring magic to everyday life. From the beginning, we never designed things that were purely science fiction. We started with this idea that technology could be worn, that the new media tools of the digital age could make fashion more exciting. Cute circuit garment, and some of them are sensors. So they're invisible, but they're monitoring your body or your environment. There's no wires. It's all constructed entirely out of smart textiles and conductive films. When we started, these materials didn't exist. So we say, well, if this doesn't exist, we're just gonna invent it. We have a brain, which is a smart puck that belongs in the garment. And when you snap in this puck, it does everything. It provides the power, it provides the intelligence to the garment. And when you snap that out, you can recharge it while the garment's being washed. Very important for fashion to evolve. Our lives are digital. That digital lifestyle should be incorporated also in the things we wear. Every person in the world is unique in their own way expressing your uniqueness through the garments that you wear. So I think the future fashion is going to be more diverse in terms of materials, colors, shapes, genres. But there's also new construction techniques like 3D printing. The idea of fast fashion that you might buy something and wear it only once is not sustainable. Over the years, you may have seen some of our designs in the news. So for example, when Katy Perry wore the magical illuminated gown to the Met Gala, that was one of our designs. A company called Cute Circuit, they're from France, and um, I like, you know, things that light up. I love living in the future. I feel like when Blade Runner predicted the future, I'm living in it now, you know, and I love that. And shortly after that, there was another dress that was worn by Nicole Scherzinger to a red carpet event, where as she was arriving on the red carpet, tweets from her fans were arriving in real time onto her dress and spiraling around her as she moved which was actually the world's first internet-connected evening wear. I'm wearing the first couture Twitter dress by Cute Circuit, and it's crazy! Nicole Scherzinger making Twitter fashion history after wearing a crystal-encrusted digital dress which lights up to spell out tweets sent by fans. It's a dress that they designed specifically for me. Indeed, it was. But one of the things that we're really well known for is the concept of wearable touch. In 2002, we invented a shirt called the Hug Shirt that lets you send hugs over distance. So imagine you are on the International Space Station and you want to send a hug back to your mom on Earth. You put on the Hug Shirt, you give yourself a squeeze, and sensors capture where you're touching, how strong and for how long, and all this data goes out into the network and arrives into the hug shirt of your mom that can feel your touch from a distance. That's pretty amazing. And we're now living in the age of COVID-19, where many people are separated from each other and people that would like to be together maybe can't because they have to remain isolated. And in fact, one of the things that we've been reading in the news lately was something called touch hunger. Literally, people are suffering from being unable to meet their friends and hug them or shake hands. And over many years of research creating the hug shirts, we actually read many scientific papers about why touch is so important for humans. Scientists that have calculated why hugs are good for you. When you hug someone, dopamine and endorphins are released in the brain and they create a sense of happiness. So when we hug someone or even just shake hands, if we have at least 50 touches per day, we're gonna be happier people. 
So when you think about the great strides we've made in telecommunication in the last 20-30 years, you can now send instantly around the world things like text or voice or images or video. But somehow along the way, we didn't really consider the communication medium of touch. And we're now discovering that it's one of the most important ways that humans communicate with each other. And that's also what gives us our mental well-being. Because if we're able to touch and connect, both physically and mentally with other people, then our overall well-being increases. Now, haptic technology doesn't only have to render touch as a data source. It can render data of any kind. A few years ago, we were approached by a symphony orchestra in Germany, and they had the idea that the hug shirt could be used to allow deaf people to feel music on their body. So we developed a brand new software for the hug shirt that allowed each part of the orchestra to render itself to a different haptic sensation in a different location on the body of the wearer. So for example, the top here was the higher notes of the violins and the flutes. Here, you'd have violas, and lower you'd have cello and bass and timpani and drums. In this way, the wearer can start to understand a kind of language of the orchestra and feel the rhythm and intensity and volume of each individual instrument and passage of music. This became known as a brand new concept that we call the sound shirt. One of the things that is very interesting for us as both designers and innovators is to create products that can be really used by everyone. And one of the things that is almost never thought of is inclusivity. By creating a product that works with deaf people, hard of hearing people, and even blind people, we actually create a product that is a better product for everyone. I tell you now, it was very intense and the best gaming experience ever, period. Now, when I game, it feels empty. So thanks, Aww. guys. <laughs> Without the shirt, it's like everything's weird and just, I don't know. I, I want more now. I'm playing Titanfall again like I did, but it's just, it's missing that something, you know? Sound shirt, che sono queste magliette che traducono a livello sinestetico, sensoriale, la musica. E mi piaceva proprio il concetto di suonare e trasferire i sentimenti, il sentire la musica eh, attraverso degli impulsi che partono da, proprio da, dalla musica che ho scritto. But with this on, boom! I can feel the vibrations, I can dance confidently with the drums, sensing the vibrations all over. It's awesome! Wearing the shirt allows me to detect details and makes me feel as if I'm part of the music. Oh my god, wow. It was emotional. Yeah, same. I got emotional. It was a strong reaction. You can feel so many different sort of frequencies. Like you've got different kind of beats, so you've got different pulses going at different times. So like, this is what I'm feeling in one place, and then you've got vibrations in a different place. Yeah, it's like there's different instruments playing. I can't, I can't describe it. It's just you have to experience it really, and then you'd get it yourself. But it's so different. This it's an experience. It means you can feel the music with this. So it it will change your life, I think. Feels like something that should have happened a long time ago. Like I played, I played a rave, a deaf rave. You just play the bassiest cuts you got, and it was, it was sick. Like it did that things like that. It just brings you closer to them rather than having to go into like that patronising area. If you're in a wheelchair or if you're, if, if you're deaf or whatever, you get put into an area. With things like the jacket, you, you put in with the crowd. Do you know what I mean? One of the things that we've been doing lately, especially during the coronavirus pandemic is that we've been deploying hug shirts to hospitals, both in the US and the UK. It gives people a new way of experiencing things and brings them together in new ways. That's what I was talking about when I said wearable technology can bring people together. 
And it's this kind of connectivity that sort of makes us design all of our products. And sometimes people ask us, what inspires you to design these new products, these new technologies? And many times we are inspired just really by simple like people trying one of our products and asking us, oh, could it do this other thing as well? So we'll try to make it better for them. But it also is inspired by sci-fi movies, space travel, and every future scenario that we sort of come up with, because sometimes we look at each other and we think, how are people going to live in the future? And sometimes we're even inspired by a retrofuturistic past. For example, designer Pierre Cardin in the 60s in Paris started imagining what would people wear and which kind of house will they have if everybody all of a sudden moved to live on the moon. And so are these same kind of thoughts that belong to designers back in the day are the same kind of thoughts that we have now, thinking about how will people live in the future? Because when you think about your habitat here on Earth, it can be your house, but sometimes the habitat for your body is your clothes. But what happens when you move to a habitat that you don't know very well and that has very particular needs, such as moving to Mars, for example? So we become really inspired by watching events such as like the Crew Dragon spaceship docking to the International Space Station. Very cool. Seeing how it lands back and when it returns. And it really makes you imagine that sooner or later we will all be flying, zipping around all over the space. So here's to thinking about how to create your future. And many times we talk with students and with young designers and they always ask us, how do you invent new things? And literally, we invent new things just by like trying everything that comes to mind, trying different designs and merging science, technology, arts, fashion, engineering, and just creating experiences that didn't exist before. Usually when we create these new designs, we're thinking of a specific sort of vision of the future, a way things could be amazing and, and better in the future. And the most exciting part is when we figure out a way to do that future scenario today. Yeah, I think the fact that all the concepts that we came up with over the years, we were actually able to create today and we actually can deploy them with users everywhere in the world. I think that is what has designers and innovators makes us really happy because coming up with ideas somehow is almost easy, but then making these ideas real is what makes the difference.